Welcome everyone. I'm here in the predimed.r script that you can find on the class website along with the predimed.csv data file to go along with it. In this script, uh, we're going to analyze data from a large randomized controlled trial of the Mediterranean diet run by a group of researchers primarily in Spain about a decade ago. Uh, they randomized thousands of people to one of uh, two different arms. One uh, was to receive a Mediterranean diet rich in olive oil, fish, vegetables, kind of all the things you might read about in reports of the Mediterranean diet on blogs or newspapers. And the other was a control diet, basically the same kind of diet recommended by most uh, governments, uh, kind of think U.S. Food and Drug Administration food pyramid, if you want to think about the control diet. Okay, so... Let's read in the data set here. I'm going to go over to import data set from text base, surf to wherever I've got this data file stored on my machine. Here it is, predimed.csv. Um, make sure that R knows there's a header row, so click on header yes. Every row here is a patient in this clinical trial, and every column is a piece of information about this patient. Let's import it and take a look. So for example, this first patient in the trial, it just happens to be the first row in the database, uh, this was a 58-year-old male who was a former smoker. Here's their BMI, their waist in centimeters. Uh, and then if you kind of scroll all the way to the end, you're going to see this indicator here, event, yes or no. That was the outcome of interest in this trial, the rate at which people experienced cardiac events. And that had a specific definition in the context of this trial. But basically, you should think of that as a heart attack, what the doctors would call a myocardial infarction. So this is yes or no, did the patient experience a heart attack in about five to seven years worth of follow-up right here. All right. Let's uh, go back to the script here, load our libraries, Mosaic, Tidyverse, and ggplot. The underlying question we're going to address in this video, uh, at least try to, is whether the Mediterranean diet reduced the rate of cardiac events compared to the control diet. All right, so let's build a model to estimate that difference. We've gotten used now to the idea that we can run a model that estimates the difference in outcomes between two conditions, in this case, Mediterranean diet, and control diet. There's a couple of data pre-processing steps that have to happen in order for that to work here. So if you actually go back and look at the data set, you notice that the outcome here, which is the thing that we care about modeling, whether or not somebody experienced a cardiac event, is a yes-no. And, and we need to code that as what's called a dummy variable, a zero-one indicator, where one means yes and zero means no. Uh, because again, anytime we fit an equation to data sets, those equations expect numbers as outputs, not yes or no outcomes. So we'll turn this into a number using the if-else function. The second thing that we're going to do is take a look at this group variable over here. There's actually three different arms of the trial. I said there were two. There were actually three. There's the control diet, and then there's two different versions of the Mediterranean diet. There's the Mediterranean diet plus VOO. That stands for virgin olive oil. Basically, they gave the participants who were randomized to this arm of the trial uh, something like 250 milliliters of virgin olive oil every week and, and basically said, go to town, douse everything that you, uh, that you eat uh, or want uh, to have olive oil, just douse it in olive oil. The other one was, uh, I don't exactly know how much, say 100 grams of nuts per week. And they were told, if you're hungry and you want a snack, snack on the nuts. So we're going to collapse those two different subarms of the trial into a single overall Mediterranean diet, just to get a clean comparison control versus any form of Mediterranean diet, regardless of what the supplement was. And we're going to do those two pre-processing steps using the mutate and if-else function. So here on line 26 to 27, we're going to define a new variable. It's called event dummy. That is a dummy variable for whether somebody experienced a cardiac event. Uh, and notice the syntax here. We're going to take uh, pretty med, we are going to mutate that data set by adding on this new variable whose name and content we're defining. The name is event dummy. We could call it anything we wanted. That seems pretty informative. And the content of that is going to be the result of this if else function. Now, if else in R accepts three inputs. There's a test that is a, a true or false outcome here. So we're testing case by case in the data set whether the person experienced a cardiac event. If they did, and the answer to that question is yes, we give them a one. And if the answer is anything else other than yes, which in this case, the only option is no, we give them a zero. So let's execute that line. And now if you take a look, say, at the first several lines of this again, 
uh, you'll notice a new variable at the end, event dummy, that takes the value one whenever there's an event and zero whenever there's not an event. And again, that is for the purpose of giving ourselves a number to build our model with. Step, Pre-processing step two, we're going to define a dummy variable for any Mediterranean diet, basically collapsing the two Mediterranean diet arms into a single arm. Again, we'll use the mutate function to add on new variables to our data set and the if-else function to do a logical test. So the way I'll do this test, you can do it many ways, is to ask, well, did you get the control diet? If you got the control diet, we'll give you a zero. In other words, no, you didn't get any form of Mediterranean diet. If the answer is anything else, which would be med diet plus virgin olive oil or med diet plus nuts, you get a one. So let's run that line. And again, I'll page back up to that for six lines right here. Now there's another new column for med diet any. Anytime the, the diet is control, you get a zero. Anytime the diet is any form of Mediterranean diet, you get a one. All right, now with those two data pre-processing steps out of the way, we are ready to fit our model. And this is a pretty simple model. There's just one predictor for our event dummy outcome right here, and that's med diet any. So let's run the model. Event dummy is a zero one indicator. Med diet any is a, uh, again, a, another zero one indicator of whether you're on the Mediterranean diet. Here are the coefficients. All right, so the interpretation of these coefficients would be the following. On, among those patients that were randomized to receive the control diet, remember this was a randomized control trial here, we don't have to worry too much about confounding. Among those randomized to the control arm, 4.75% of them, that's 0.0475 and change, uh, experienced some type of cardiac event, basically a heart attack, during the five to seven years of follow-up. Among those on the Mediterranean diet, that's an offset. So those on the Mediterranean diet experience these cardiac events, not at a minus 1.1% rate, that wouldn't make sense, but 1.1% less often in absolute terms than those uh, from the baseline or non-Mediterranean diet. And if you want to think of that, again, cardiac events are uh, mercifully rare. So if you want to think about that maybe in, in absolute terms, you get this coefficient right here. Or if you wanted to think about it in relative terms, you might say, okay, well, the baseline is 4.75%. Those on the Mediterranean diet experienced it that much less often, minus 1.1%. What's that number in relative terms? It's about 23, 24% right there. I think it's closer to 24 if you don't round here, but let's just call it 23%. That's kind of the headline you might see. And in fact, that was the headline you see, uh, you saw in major newspapers when the results of this very large, very expensive, very lengthy clinical trial was published. Those on the Mediterranean diet, 23% less likely to experience cardiac events. However, the question here is, could that be a small sample difference? And if you look at the size of this data set, I'll just look at the dimensions of this data frame to give you a sense. Oops, a little typo there. There are 17 pieces of information about each person, and there are 6,324 participants in the trial. That's a lot, so you might immediately say, well, you know, that's a, it, it, it may be a small difference in absolute terms, but it's a big sample, and so we should probably not expect to see too many small sample differences, but let's run a randomization test to check. All right, so remember, a randomization test is a subtype of overall hypothesis test, and the, all hypothesis tests have the same four steps. Step one, we have to specify a null hypothesis. Here, our null hypothesis is that people experience cardiac events at the same rate, we don't know what that rate is, but let's postulate that it's the same in both the treatment and the control group. Another way of saying that is that regardless of whether you got the Mediterranean diet, you are either going to experience a cardiac event or not, depending on your own personal circumstances, and the group that you were in didn't change things, right? All right, so that's the null hypothesis. And it's a little bit harder to think about getting access to the sampling distribution under this null hypothesis by simulation, and that's where the randomization test comes in. Step two in any hypothesis test is to uh, decide what our test statistic is. That's how we're going to measure the evidence in the data against the null hypothesis. And our test statistic from our model right here is the coefficient on the Mediterranean diet variable here. Remember, the smaller this is, the closer to zero, the more similar the control in the Mediterranean diets look, and the more plausible the null hypothesis looks. On the other hand, the larger this coefficient is here, the more negative it is, the less often people experience cardiac events on the Mediterranean diet compared to the control group, and the less plausible the null hypothesis looks. So that number right there, or the number that we might have gotten under the null hypothesis, 
that represents a pretty good measuring stick to measure evidence against the null hypothesis. We'll call that coefficient our test statistic. All right, step three, and this is where we come into the randomization test. How do we actually simulate the probability distribution of that test statistic, assuming that the null hypothesis is true? And the logic of the randomization test is to re-randomize. That's how we would get simulations under the null hypothesis. So got to keep in mind, this is a designed experiment. So if the null hypothesis were true, and which diet you are on doesn't affect your likelihood of experiencing a cardiac event, well, the outcome was simply going to be whatever it was. You were either going to have an event or you were not going to have an event, regardless of which treatment you were in. So if we re-randomize, that is by shuffling or permuting this Mediterranean diet indicator and basically re-randomizing people in this trial, that lets us see how different those kind of foreordained uh, outcomes look under the re-randomized treatment and control groups when we know that the null hypothesis is true, right? Because if we re-randomize here, we completely break any correlation between which diet you were on and which outcome you actually experienced in the real world. So let's run our randomization test. This is also called a permutation test. And the key uh, kind of modifications here are, well, we're going to repeat 10,000 times, that's our Monte Carlo simulation. And what are we repeating? You notice there's a, a really important and very subtle difference here in that model statement versus the model statement we ran up here. For here, we were running the regression on the event dummy as the outcome and the Mediterranean diet indicator as your predictor. Down here in our randomization test, we are running on a re-randomized diet indicator using the shuffle function. And that shuffle function is designed in the mosaic, is defined in the mosaic library. So it'll take R a while to think this through. It's got to refit this model 10,000 times to 10,000 different data sets, where in each one you get a, a different pattern of re-randomization, of shuffling of this Mediterranean diet indicator. Okay, it's done. Let's take a look at the first several lines of this. Here's uh, and this kind of looks like the outcome of bootstrapping. It's not bootstrapping. There's an important difference here because we weren't resampling here. We were re-randomizing the outcome. And that's, a, again, a subtle but important difference. The data frame, however, looks pretty similar. You get an intercept column, a med diet, any column. And these are the different intercepts and or baselines and offsets or coefficients that we got under our 10,000 different re-randomizations. Let's run a histogram here of this column right here, the med diet any variable. And this is showing us the sampling distribution of that med diet any coefficient under the null hypothesis, where we've re-randomized. Uh, we said, okay, you know, the treatment doesn't affect the, the, uh, the outcome here. So let's just repeatedly re-randomize people to different treatment arms and ask, well, how much could treatment and control groups differ just by chance? And the answer is here. You know, we might see differences of half a percent up half a percent down, but probably not 2% up or 2% down. And let's compare this with our observed coefficient, if you recall, which was about minus 1.1%, minus 0.011 right there, which is about right there, kind of out in the tails of this distribution. Uh, we could calculate a p-value here, that's step four, and ask, well, how many of these randomized coefficients were more extreme than our observed coefficient? And the answer was, 185, and as a fraction out of 10,000, that's about 0.0185, and that's our p-value. Again, you're going to get some slightly different numbers here due to Monte Carlo variability. You know, there's only 10,000 Monte Carlo simulations right here. In order to estimate this exactly, you would need to do, you know, millions right here. But 10,000 is enough to kind of get the pretty close to the first, uh, first decimal place and, and probably pretty close to the second decimal place here. You might get 0.02 something, might get 0.01 something. Point is, the p-value under the null hypothesis is about 0.02, basically 2%. And that number, remember, represents, if the null hypothesis were true, what's the probability of seeing a coefficient here at least as extreme as what we actually observed? And this is the kind of p-value that, in fact, got reported in, this, in the study when it was published uh, in one of the major medical journals. Uh, a small p-value suggesting that, well, the null hypothesis might be true, but in light of this evidence, looks implausible or not all that plausible with a p-value of about 2%. The conclusion would be, hey, Mediterranean diet probably does lower your risk of cardiac events. And that's why this uh, study made headlines across the world.